Reading with your kids. Hola, ni hao, konnichiwa, assalamu alaikum, shalom, mahaba, moni moni wanji, namaste, jambo, bienvenidos. Hi, my name is Jed Lee, and this is the Reading with Your Kids podcast. We are coming to you from the beautiful neighborhood of Reedville in the southwest corner of Boston, Massachusetts. We are delighted and so honored that you're joining us in our mission to help families grow closer through reading. Please tell all of your family and friends about the podcast and please subscribe to the show on the iHeartRadio app, on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, Audible, Stitcher Radio, wherever you find your podcast. We have two wonderful guests today. Alicia Smith is joining us from Australia to celebrate my FIFO dad. And Alva Sachs is returning to the podcast to celebrate Sam and Sadie Super Sleuths. Before we invite our guests into the studio, we want to let you know that this episode of the Reading With Your Kids podcast is brought to you by Reverse, a memoir written by Lois Leckford. Do you have a student who's struggling in school? Then I have the book for you. Reverse and Memoir is a brilliant educational story that every parent and every educator must read. It's a story that tugs at your heart. As in any good story, there is a villain. And in this story, there are several. Follow Lois's real-life journey as she overcomes the odds in the story about the importance of developing literacy in children. It really is a, a, an amazing story. Uh, long story short, when uh, Lois's son was in school, they said that he'll never learn, he'll never be able to read, and he recently graduated from Oxford. It's amazing. Get your copy today. Reverse, a memoir by Lois Leckford. This episode of the Reading with the Kids podcast is also brought to you by A Home for Sally, beautiful picture book written by our friend Stanetta Anthony. When Sally entered a love and care kennel with her siblings, she was sure they would each be adopted soon. But Sally looked different from her siblings and the other dogs in the kennel. She has a missing left paw. As Sally watched her siblings and the other dogs being adopted, her dream of having a family was slowly fading away. Join Sally on her quest to find a forever home. This is a beautiful story about friendship, about family, and about loving yourself, no matter what your differences might be. Get your copy today. It's a beautiful addition to your family library. A Home for Sally by Stanetta Anthony. Join us right now from the beautiful nation of Australia. Our guest is here today to celebrate her debut picture book. It's called My FIFO Dad. We're going to find out what that means. Please welcome to the show, Alicia Smith. Hey, Alicia, how are you? Hi, I'm great. Thanks. How are you? I'm wonderful. Um, thanks so much for being with us. Isn't it so neat that we're living in a time where we are literally on opposite sides of the planet, different hemispheres, different sides, and yet we're able to not only speak to each other but see each other, and yeah. it's amazing. It is. It's amazing how far we have come. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. we still act like dope sometimes. We do. <laughs> and, and we don't yeah, treat each wrong. other right. You know, we figured out how the technology works, but we haven't figured yeah. out how to get along with each other. Um, but I'm, ex- I'm excited. I'm curious. Um, what does a FIFO dad, what does that stand for? That F-I-F-O. So FIFO stands for fly in, fly out, which is particularly when your mum or dad will catch a plane to go to their job. I understand that my kids had a FIFO dad. I do educational magic shows around the United States. And oh, so yeah. I was I, I was a DIFO. I, a, a Dido. Yeah. I, I would drive in, <laughs> drive out. And um, yeah. fortunately, because I worked for myself and was in control of my schedule, I was able to limit it to one week a month or, you know, it, if they were able to come with us to, you know, go out for two or three weeks at a time together. Yeah. But there are an awful lot of kids in this situation, and and a lot of kids have to get readjusted to it because we're coming out of the pandemic, and now we're flying again. And so um, kids who have had their parents to them for the last couple of years are like, oh, we got to go back to that thing where you're not here half the time. 
Yeah, that's right. It can be really hard on the kids. Yeah. They just get used to them being home and then they then they fly out again and yeah, they have to adjust to them not being there again. Mm-hmm. And I think it's important that you mentioned um, a, a FIFO parent can be a dad or a mom because we have lots of yep. moms who are traveling um, th- yep. around the world. So what what was it that inspired you to write this book? Well, actually, my husband has done FIFO for about eight years now. Um, so my kids have always grown up with a FIFO dad. Um, but I found when my oldest was quite young, he just struggled to understand what that meant. So I used to just write paper books for him and I used to make calendars for him for to just try to explain what a FIFO dad is. Mm-hmm. So he was really my inspiration. Mm. So tell us a little bit about the story. Who are we going to meet in the story? So you're going to meet my, my oldest Hudson, my oldest son. And the dad is his dad, my husband, Ash. And it just kind of, you just go along with them for a fly-in, fly fly fly-out stint. So it shows a little snippet of what a fly-in day looks like, a little snippet of what a fly-out day looks like, and the in-between. So ways that I have taught my son and my husband to stay connected and make sure that my husband is still seeing our son's milestones and achievements. Yeah. I, I think that's really important, and and again, one of the reasons, one of the things that I really appreciated uh, about my situation, our family situation, was I was able to work with the school and to know what was yep. coming up and what was important. So when I was going away, ninety nine out of a hundred times, I wasn't going away for to, yep. to miss an event. Yes, that's right. It's hard, though, because my husband wasn't in control Mm -hmm. of his time away. So he would sometimes miss a birthday or sometimes Easter, um, things like that. So I'd have to, like, mentally prepare my kids for that because otherwise they just don't know and they get really upset. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think the best way to deal with it is through talking about it. And it sounds like my FIFO dad is a great resource to kind of start those conversations. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I'd, um, I also have a few other books in the works as well, but they're just projects mm-hmm. <laughs> at the moment. But I got a My FIFO Mum coming out in a couple of weeks as well. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Yeah. So how far in, how old was uh, Hudson when you realized we have a different family dynamic here and I need to do something to make sure that my son and my my husband stay connected? Yeah, it was probably around two years old. He was just becoming more aware that his dad was sometimes more away than he was at home. And then when he turned probably four, when he started going to daycare, he saw other dads picking their kids up and realized, oh, my dad doesn't pick me up all the time, like in his work uniform. Like, oh, like he just quite, yeah, he was getting curious around four. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So yeah. what kind of things do you think it's important for FIFO parents to do? How, how can they stay connected um, and really make the most of the time when they're home? And then also, how yeah. can they stay away when they're away from home? Well, our big one is FaceTime. Mm-hmm. FaceTime is a big one for us. But we um, sometimes it's hard to do that because FIFO parents can work night shifts so they're tired during the day. So it kind of depends on their roster where if my husband had night shifts for one week, we would actually FaceTime him in the morning when he was getting off work while the kids were having breakfast. Mm-hmm. Um, Other ways, my son loves writing letters. He's very artistic. He loves drawing pictures. So we actually used to send him letters in the mail and he thought it was really cool that, you know, his letter would go on a plane um, to see his dad. Um, And then also when they do come home, I like to have majority of the housework done. So when he is home, we can spend all that time together Mm. instead of worrying about, you know, the, the washing and the lawns, Mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We what a what a wonderful thing it would be to get kids just to write letters. Yes, you know, yeah, I, I, that's I, so I, outdated. <laughs> I don't know what it's like in Australia, but I know he. I have uh, my kids are now twenty six and twenty nine, and I have a niece, and I'm 
very, very close to who's 18. And yep. I, would, I would not be surprised if uh, they didn't know how to address an envelope. Yes. <laughs> My son was actually helping me pack orders last night. <laughs> and he was he loved sticking all the stickers on. He's like, oh, where do they live? Like Western Australia. And, mm-hmm. yeah, he loved it. <laughs> yeah, that's neat. That's neat. I remember it now. It, it's wonderful that you guys have FaceTime and that you can have that face-to-face yes. time. I remember being thankful back in the day when my son, uh, you know, was born 29 years ago, and I would re- be reading to him all the time. And uh, the first time I had to go away with without him, um, I took books along. And yeah. uh, I would be I, – I remember being in, in the hallway of a hotel on a pay phone, putting, yep. putting coins into the pay phone so I could read to my son long distance. Yes, that's beautiful. I love that idea. Reading books is such, yeah, it's such a good way to stay connected with the kids. Yeah. I think one of the advantages to being a FIFO dad or a FIFO mom is that we're aware of the fact that we're away from home a lot and that our time together is limited. And I yep. think if you're a wise FIFO dad or mom, you're aware of that, and you make sure you make the most of every minute that you are home together. Definitely. And I think there, there are a lot of families out there where, who are together every day, but they're just in the same space. They're not really together, if you know what I mean. Yeah. No, I totally get that. My husband actually has just come home. He started his own company. So now we're very, very lucky. We don't do FIFO anymore. Um, it took us seven years, but we did get out of it. And even now, every weekend, we're, what, what can we do? Like, let's do something with the kids. We're very – we just love spending time together now because we know how precious it is. Yeah, that's wonderful. Well, I know I, I know people are going to want to know where they can go to find out more about my FIFO dad and find out more about you. Yeah, well, um, I have a website. It's www.thatfifofam.com. Um, but I think postage costs a lot, so I also have it on Amazon as well. Mm-hmm. Yep. For um, overseas. Very, as well. very, very good. We've had a really good time speaking to the author of the debut picture book, My FIFO Dad. Our guest has been the author, Alicia Smith. Hey, Alicia, thanks so much for being with us. Thank you so much. I've really enjoyed my time here. If you are anywhere in the New England area on August 6, 2022, please come on down to the Buttonwood Park Zoo in New Bedford and help us celebrate episode number 1500 of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. It's a beautiful zoo. The Buttonwood Park Zoo is uh, over 125 years old. It's a beautiful place. We're going to add some magic. We're going to be giving away lots of books. We're going to be interviewing some authors and maybe even interviewing you. It's all happening on August 6, 2022 at the Buttonwood Park Zoo in New Bedford, Massachusetts. Join us right now from Calabasas and the wonderful state of California. Our guest is returning to the Reading With Your Kids podcast to celebrate her brand new book. It's called Sam and Sadie Super Sleuths. Please welcome back to the show, Alva Sachs. Hey, Alva, how are you? Hey, everybody out there. It's great to see you, Alva. I'm so excited that you have a brand new book out. Yeah, I call them the pandemic books. The pandemic but Well, there's, I don't know if there's been as many pandemic books as there were pandemic children, but there are an awful lot of pandemic books born yeah, in the last couple years. Two years, years ago, I did uh, The Pirate Princess, mm-hmm. and this year I did uh, Sam and Sadie, although I know it's backwards, but uh, Sam and Sadie Super Sleuths. And uh, so, yeah, it was exciting to do that and, you know, get another book out there. Yeah. So tell us all about Sam and Sadie. Well, Sam and Sadie were on the shelf a couple years ago. Somehow other things got into my brain and I did uh, The Pirate Princess. And I kind of forgot about Sam and Sadie because it was going to be called um, Sophie and, and Sam. <laughs> Sophie and Sadie, Sophie and Sadie. And then when I finished The Pirate Princess, I went back to my writing and my files and I said, you know what? Sam and Sadie sounds a lot more fun, you know, than Sophie and Sadie, although I wanted to include the alliteration in it. And so um, it's about a boy and his dog, Sadie, um, who have adventures in their home. They actually become 
Sherlock Holmes, the detective. And he dresses for the part. He's got a Sherlock Holmes hat. He's got a big magnifying glass and puts a fancy scarf around Sadie's neck. She's his Watson. And um, they actually hear things that are happening in their house that they're not normally uh, hearing. Hmm. Hmm. Dad was walking around and saying, I don't want to give the whole thing away, but looking for something. And then his brother, Dylan, was walking around looking for something. And then his mom had the worst catastrophe of all of them. So the question is, how do you be a super sleuth or a detective to find out all these things that happen? Mm -hmm. These are major crimes in a house. Major crimes, absolutely. Detective novels and true crime TV shows and, and true crime is like the biggest thing in podcasts. Everybody has this fascination with solving mysteries. Where do you think that comes from? Oh, I guess because people just want to find out what everybody else is doing. <laughs> <laughs> or if somebody did something, they want to find it and solve it and make it better for the people. Um, on, on this level, I think um, my thoughts are kids are very curious, you know, and um, when they're at home or playing outside or reading a book and something, you know, strikes their fancy and they hear something, it's kind of like a stimulus for their imagination and their creativity, you know, and it's the same thing with adult, you know, crime stuff as well. I mean, there are so many TV shows that do that, but I, I'm not into that. But um, I, I just thought it would be fun to write something like this to show how imagination and creativity and then being involved with your family and what everybody does and that you can find adventure, you know, right in your own backyard, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing like a, a kid with his dog or, or whatever pet that they do have to go on a adventure together and uh, kind of bring in, you know, the Sherlock Holmes stuff and things like that to make it interesting and to know that there's a, a history mm -hmm. to being a, a, a sleuth, mm -hmm. you know. And that's just such a great word to learn at a young age. Sleuth, you just, just, sleuth. just impress everybody in the playground at recess. And so I have an asterisk with it on my um, on the back of the book cover that a sleuth is a detective. Mm -hmm. So it's another vocabulary word for them. And then when I do, I have activity sheets that go with all my books, you know. So um, they can print and download um, crossword puzzles, word scrambles, and um, write your own ending, you know. Mm -hmm. If you didn't, you didn't like the ending or you have an idea for a new ending. And so I have a lot of follow-up activities that parents can use you know, after after the reading and stuff like that, which in a, not only parents, it's just if they are babysitters or older brothers or sisters or grandparents or a friend. And then what it does, it, it engages the child. It helps to develop vocabulary and sequencing and all this other type of stuff. So as a former teacher, I started doing that with my first book, Circus Fever, 100 years ago. Mm. And so um, I have all those for free downloads on my website. And it also lots of times... When you finish a book, whether you're a, a babysitting them or you're a grandparent or you're a friend or an older sibling, it's like, okay, the book's done. But when you engage them and go back and ask questions or go back to these, you know, activity sheets, um, it's kind of a fun, you know, extension. Mm -hmm. Reading in literacy is a passion of yours. In, in addition to writing books, you're the president of Reading is Fundamental Southern California. You've been doing that job for a very, very long time. Where's, yeah. yeah, where's the passion for literacy? Where did that come from for you? Well, I never wanted to be a teacher, so that was an accident. Uh, I wanted to be a lawyer, but when I went to the University of Illinois in Champaign-Urbana, um, it was full, so I had to go the LAS route, you know, and take the regular classes. So they said, why don't you go into education? You know, and then you can, once you get your classes covered, then you could switch back into LAS or whatever they're calling it. Well, it turned out I was taking graduate classes at night. I was so far ahead with everything, and I started taking education classes. I was in love with what I was learning. Um, I always loved kids and everything like that. I wasn't married or anything, but just something that was like, that's my serendipity, you know? Mm -hmm. things, things just happen. You don't know what the reason is, and... um and I went with it. It was the best decision that I, I ever made. I love teaching. 
I taught for 13 years in a classroom for fourth and fifth grade, and then I subbed for three years, kindergarten through fifth grade. And um, there's nothing like being in a classroom with the kids, but you know that when you work with kids on stage, Mm -hmm. you know, you never know what to expect and you never know how they're going to respond. And it's so great that you can put them in a situation where they can be themselves, Mm -hmm. be free to be themselves. And then when you see that light bulb go on, when you're teaching them, I'll go like, you know, you can do 24 times 38, you know, (laughs) and that type of stuff. So I don't know. I fell in love with it accidentally and there I was and I got my master's and did a lot of stuff with schools for a long, long time. Yeah. You mentioned that being there with a kid when that light bulb goes off in their head. And that is the best description of that because there are many times when it's just the connection is being made. Some some neural pathways are finally connecting, and you can see it in a kid's eyes. And yep. when you are a part of helping that connection be made, there really isn't anything like that. You, you, you mentioned that, you know, I'm doing magic on stage. There's no magic that can compare to the moment when you help that kid make that connection and achieve that thing and do that thing and understand that thing that they've been struggling with for many, many months or years. Um, Alva, tell everybody, please, where they can go to find out more about Sam and Sadie Super Sleuths and all of the wonderful books you've created. Oh, okay. Uh, You can go to www.alvasax.com. You can go to Amazon. All my six books are there. And we're just waiting to upload Sam and Sadie when they when that comes. Uh, so I'm on Amazon. I'm on Instagram. I'm on Twitter. Um, I'm on Facebook. So just type in Alva Sachs. And you know what, Jed? What's that? A plethora. Oh, there's another <laughs> word. A plethora of Alva Sachs. And I have um, I have um, story times that I've done that are on YouTube's and other uh, other places too so wonderful wonderful like i tell people when i um work with people um i tell them there's there's no edge you can't fall off the edge (laughs) (laughs) you know you you click on one thing it takes you to another thing it's like a frog jumping in lily pads yeah okay you put in one one word and it'll take you to another one that then you, you go on to another word so you're safe. You're never going to fall off the Internet. Awesome. Awesome. You don't need, you don't need a parachute. <laughs> We've had a great time speaking to the author of Sam and Sadie Super Sleuth, Alva Sachs. Alva, thanks so much for being back with us. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Maybe I'll see you in October. I'll we'll see what happens with me. All Wish right. you lots of luck. And you know how much I love you and how special you are. And the gift, the gift that you are to kids and families everywhere. Thank you so very much. Please be sure to join us for the next episode of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. Our guest will be Anne McCallum Stutz. She'll be celebrating high flyers, 15 inspiring women aviators and astronauts. What a great conversation I had with Anne. You don't want to miss it. If you are the author of a fantastic children's book, you might want to sit down and have a fantastic conversation about your book here on the Reading With Your Kids podcast. Hey, it's fun, it's easy, and it doesn't cost a thing. Imagine that, sitting down for a long-form conversation, letting the world know about your fantastic book. It is possible. All you need to do is to go to our website, readingwithyourkids.com. Click on the Authors Click Here button at the top of the page and scroll on down to be a guest. If you go a little bit too far... You're going to hit our Certified Great Read menu button. That's okay, because our Certified Great Read program has helped many, many authors. Uh, it, it's a great way to let families know that your book is worthy of a place on your family library. Oh, and, and, and if you really have a lot of extra energy and you go past the Certified Great Read menu option, you're going to hit our monthly promotion program option, and that's really exciting. We can help celebrate your book. Through commercials on the podcast, messages to our 100,000 plus social media followers, display your book in our nationwide network of digital pedestrian billboards, 
and have your book with us in our booth at whatever live event we'll be participating in that month. In August, we'll be down at the Buttonwood Park Zoo. We'd love to see you there. It's in New Bedford, Massachusetts. Find out all about this by going to our website, readingwithyourkids.com, clicking on the Authors Click here button at the top of the page and scrolling on down. I want to thank the folks who made today's show so wonderful. Of course, we want to start by thanking our guest, Alicia Smith. Please be sure to check out my FIFO dad and Alva Sachs, author of Sam and Sadie Super Sleuths. I want to thank my amazing team, Fatima Khan, Rory Grady, Nicole Bel Castro, Mirabella Q, Rain Penn. I want to thank my beautiful wife for all the support she gives me. Most of all, we all want to thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. And as always, thank you so very much for taking the time to make the world a better place by reading with your kids. I'll be looking for you in the next edition of the Reading with Your Kids podcast.